welcome age of vintage society. John Astin was a talented, mustachioed goofball, and this was reflected in every role he played. John had a youthful energy that radiated from his body and soul, with the audience loving every moment he displayed his energetic persona in the theatre or on their TV screens. The actor's energy allowed him to be a character actor, and he flourished in roles where the character was weird and goofy. But being a goofball didn't mean John was immune from the curse of Hollywood. He had his scandalous moments, and trust us to tell you all about it in this John Astin story. How John Astin hid a scandal under everyone's nose. John was scandalous, but you wouldn't know because he is so loved. He even hid his scandal right under your nose. The Adams Family is unarguably John's best work. The series, which ran for three years, was an adaptation of Charles Adams's weird cartoons about an old family with a different belief system of how the world worked. Their free-thinking beliefs put them in conflict with other people of their world who operated strictly on societal rules. Astin played Gomez Adams, the family's head who chose their surname on a whim. Gomez did many things on a whim with his man-child nature. Astin's character loved toys, but there was one thing he loved more than toys. He loved his cold-looking wife, Morticia, to an impossible degree, and their love led to some sultry moments on screen. TV series usually were straight and narrow, with most shows not even referring to sex. It was an unspoken taboo in TV shows, and it didn't matter whether these shows revolved around married couples. Everything was straight and narrow, but goofy Astin was able to change things. With his skillful acting, the actor portrayed that he and his on-screen wife had a spicy love life. When Morticia spoke a single word in French, Astin's character would go mad with desire, and he would begin to kiss her up her arm affectionately. But Astin made portrayal of his lust funny, with his energetic and comic acting skills, so that the audience would laugh rather than react negatively. The actor's splendid performance kept him in the hearts of fans even when the Adams Family show ended. His popularity skyrocketed and his infamy rose. Apart from getting many good roles, some were leading and others supporting. Astin repeatedly returned from anything connected to the Adams Family show. He returned for the NBC TV movie of the show in 1997 titled Halloween with the New Adams Family. The star also used his superb voice to voice his Gomez character in the cartoon version of the Adams Family. He even got a daytime Emmy nomination for his performance. When the Adams Family returned as the New Adams Family in 1998, Astin played Grandpa Adams. The Adams Family was special for Astin. With how connected he was to the franchise, it's quite a surprise that the actor didn't get tempted to change his name to Adams so he could be the character all day. After all, the man was as scandalous as Gomez Adams when it came to women, and this time there was no goofiness to hide behind. The talented John Astin was born in Baltimore, Maryland, to scholarly parents. Astin's father was the director of the National Bureau of Standards, which is now known as the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Astin's background encouraged him to love reading and mathematics. He majored in mathematics at the Washington and Jefferson, but along the line he caught a bug. A report claimed he was part of a play that created a desire to become an actor in him. So the actor switched schools to John Hopkins University, where he studied drama. Just two years out of the university, Astin found work in the Threepenny Opera, an original New York off-Broadway production. His beautiful voice shone through in the cast album of the production. After his work on the Threepenny Opera, the actor found work as an understudy in Major Barbara. Then came the parts he got in Tall Story, which had a six-month-long run, and The Power and the Glory, an original production that ran for about a year. To support himself, the actor began to work as a voiceover artist for commercials. He caught his big break when he got a small but impactful part as the hilarious glad hand in the West Side Story film. In the film, Astin's character was the man in charge of the high school student dance. The movie opened the actor for some roles as a supporting character, and he appeared in a list of them. Most relied on the actor's comedic chops, but it didn't matter. 
Billy Rose's Jumbo, Period of Adjustment and That Touch of Mink were some of the films he played supporting roles in. Tony Randall also helped pave the way for the actor to journey into TV series. With Tony's help, the talented actor got guest-starring parts in notable series like Dennis the Menace, where he acted alongside Jay North. Also, he got a guest part in The Donna Reed Show and appeared in Harrigan and Son. It was almost as if series and films weren't complete unless the man played a supporting character in them. While these films and series were a great fit for the man, what made him a star was when he got the iconic part in I'm Dickens, He's Fenster. This iconic series had the actor leading alongside comedian Marty Ingalls. The two were partners in their carpentry work and were prone to accidents. The series fully utilised the actor's potential as a slapstick comedian and his capacity for witty conversations. Unlike other comedy series in its era, the actor performed I'm Dickens, He's Fenster in front of a live audience. Every gasp and laugh you heard were all real. Unfortunately, the series, which ran on ABC, aired between two other highly respected series, CBS's Route 66 and NBC's Sing Along with Mitch, around the same time. This led to ABC cancelling the series after 32 episodes. You know what's even sadder? ABC cancelled it too early as when it began to dominate, ABC wasn't making any more episodes. Still, Astin didn't stay out of a job for long. I'm Dickens, he's Fenster, established the star as having a range of comedic abilities. He quickly moved on and got the role of Gomez Adams in The Adams Family, but you all know about that. After The Adams Family, the actor returned to his familiar role as a guest star. He was much more popular than before, but somehow he couldn't get the consistency he needed on the silver screen. But he loved acting and was contented with whatever he got as long as he did what he loved. While he didn't become a bankable make at the silver screen, John grew into his image as a character actor. The talented actor became the Riddler in Batman in the early episodes of the second season. He originally played the role Frank Gorshin left the series in the second season. Some actors avoid associating with comic book films because they were campy, but it was right up the star's alley. The star left the show when the original Riddler actor returned. Astin had another turn as a funny character in the TV movie western comedy Evil Roy Shade. In the TV film he played a villain who falls for a school teacher and also has to deal with the sheriff out to get him. Astin's character had an unfortunate yet somehow comedic background. Roy was an orphan who was left in the desert. Buzzards raised him, and he became a mean, despicable human being. Roy stole from the rich Nelson L. Stool, which Mickey Rooney played. So Nelson hired a singing sheriff to help him get Roy. It's just as you imagined. The film was silly, but the characters pulled it off, and it became a cult classic. For Roy, it was another opportunity to work with some of Hollywood's finest, Mickey Rooney, even though Mickey had long been kicked away from the top of the Hollywood food chain. Astin wasn't goofy all the time, but it's impossible to believe this when he was part of crazy comedy shows like The Pruitts of Southampton, which became the Phyllis Diller show in the second season. He played the comedian Diller's in-law, Angus Pruitt, in the series. It is almost impossible to forget his performance in Operation Petticoat, which was based on the 1959 film of the same name. The series had asked in play Commander Matthew Sherman, who was responsible for transporting army nurses in a pink naval submarine. You already know how the series would be. It was a complete riot. As we said, the star played serious roles, and one of them was in the mystery murder series Murder, She Wrote, he acted as Harry Pierce, the cunning real estate mogul, who later became Sheriff. His character became the murderer in the last episode he appeared in. Also, the comic actor tried his hands at horror when he had the part in Tales from the Crypt, a collection of horror episodes. It ran for seven seasons and got quite the following. Although we must admit that the actor felt more at home doing comedy than in other genres, and his work in Night Court, where he acted as a person with a mental health condition, signifies this. So it is no surprise that when the actor wanted to write his own film, it was a comedy. John Astin wrote, directed and produced the comedy Prelude, a short film about a handyman who finds comfort in the grocery section of the local supermarket in his area. His work as the film's director earned him critical acclaim, and soon the actor began to get work as a director. 
John worked on some Night Gallery episodes, a collection of grim and horror episodes. The actor also directed Just Our Luck and got to work solely on Wacky Taxi, where he also played the lead role of a frustrated family man that created his own taxi company. He pursued every avenue to use his boundless talent. After working as the voice actor of Gomez in the cartoon, he acted as the voice actor of Bull Gator in the cartoon series Tasmania. Not tiring of only getting work playing comedic characters, John got cast in Killer Tomatoes films where he played Dr. Gangrene. His character hatched a horrible plan of creating a tomato monster army. His performance was so good that he returned for the sequel, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Also, he reprised the role as a voice actor for the animated series, which aired for a year. Astin also played the character of the Judge, the ghost of an old cowboy and the Frighteners which Peter Jackson directed. In fact, he developed a great relationship with Peter that the esteemed director cast John's son in one of his films because he liked working with his dad. John's son, Sean Astin, didn't disappoint in that role. He has his father's acting chops. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, after all. On his career, the actor was grateful he acted in the films he acted in. While some actors struggle and complain about being stereotyped, John embraces his. Showing appreciation for the career he's had, John said in an interview, We all struggle, I know I had plenty of that, but I've had a great time. I've done hundreds of TV shows and 30 to 40 movies, and I love acting. However, despite being a hard worker, John has a life away from the screens. He is one of the directors of the Columbia Centre for Theatrical Arts in Columbia, Maryland. Also, he once served as one of the directors of the Writers Guild of America for four years. But his biggest off-screen work is his dedication to helping to shape the next generation of actors and actresses. John Astin led the Theatre Arts and Studies Department and Homewood Professor of the Arts at John Hopkins University. It was the university he got his acting degree. John, before he retired from his teaching role, was one of the few actors that taught acting, and he is trying to help the university make theatre to be a major at the university for undergraduates. To achieve this, John and the university are trying to create the Astin Fund. He is passionate about what he does, and he wants to share that gift with those who are interested. There's one other gift John is currently sharing, the gift of his son, Sean Astin, and it was all because of the scandalous relationship he had with co-star Patty Duke. So allegedly John had an affair with Patty when he was still married. Their affair led to a gift that Patty could easily pin on her own teenage boyfriend, who she had another tabloid headline worthy relationship with and her husband. Yes, Patty married not far from when she left her scandalous relationship with teenage Arnaz. She married a man that had been subletting her house, Michael Tell. She and Michael were strangers, so no, they didn't have a happily ever after. They didn't have a happily ever two weeks together. The couple only remained married for just 13 days before they got divorced. When Patty's divorce was final, Astin's divorce had also become final. Patty Duke was John's second wife. He was initially married to Suzanne Han, who he allegedly cheated on with Patty and had three boys with Suzanne. So, from jumping into relationships with three men around the same time, Duke didn't know her baby's father. She assumed the boy would be John's, and John didn't deny it. He just adopted the boy and had a strong bond with him. But this was when things began to come interesting. Perhaps racked by guilt, Patty made a stunning confession. She told her boy Sean that John wasn't his father and that his father was Arnaz. Sean was stunned, but he came around and tried to form a relationship with Arnaz. If you thought the whole paternity drama was over, you would be wrong. In fact, it was just beginning. Twelve years later, when Sean met someone, that person was Michael Tell's relative, and the man told Sean that he and Tell could be related to Sean. It was another shocking relationship, but this time Sean had had enough, and he went for a DNA test, and the results were shocking. No one could have predicted the results. Turned out that Sean wasn't Arnaz's son, nor was he John's son. Tell was Sean's biological dad. However, Sean had a relationship with the three men, but feels more connected to John. John and Patty's relationship crumbled after a few years, and he remarried for the third time, and has stayed married ever since. 
Turned out the third time was the charm for John Astin, comic actor extraordinaire. In our next video, we'll dive into the scandalous allegations that Hollywood starlet Gloria Graham slept with her own stepson. You won't believe what we uncover.